Hi, I'm Veronica Vance. Coming up, we watch the aviation thrills of the Selfridge Air Show. Get inspired at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. And then we show you three easy ways to get around downtown. So stay tuned. Production funding for this program was made possible by the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau, driving tourism growth in Metro Detroit since 1896. More information is available at visitdetroit.com. Harrison Township for Michigan's largest free air show, the Selfridge Air Show. So how do you enjoy coming to the Selfridge Air Show? I, you know, I love it. I yeah. absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite air shows. I'm from Port Huron, and so it's about a half an hour drive for me. So it's convenient, it's easy to get here. Fun family day and exciting mm -hmm. all day long. Yep. Yeah. Heaton, this is such a cool air show, the Selfridge Air Show. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, we're really excited about it because this is the opportunity for everybody to come out here, see the planes, uh, learn all about the different kinds of aircraft. We have aircraft from Selfridge here. We have Warbirds, which are the old World War II planes, Korean War planes. We got a World War I replica plane. So it, this is just the opportunity. If you like anything about aviation, mm -hmm. this is the place you need to be. It takes a lot of work to put this on. Yeah. Of course, we're busy. We got a lot of things going on. We yeah. have to make sure that we're ready to go when the president needs us. We're National Guard, so we got to be ready when the governor needs us. Mm -hmm. But it is important for us to give people an opportunity to come out here see what they do. Their tax dollars bought all this stuff, so it's uh, their chance to see it. I know we've got planes all over, planes you can go into. Oh gosh, there's all sorts of stuff. There's the big planes, you can go inside of them. There's pilots, there's crew members out here. In the background right now, there's explosions going up. Oh so my goodness, oh, wow, look at that, on. very cool. You know, I live right here, I grew up in Southeast Michigan, I've lived here you know, pretty much my whole life. Yeah. All of our other people are from Southeast Michigan, and I want my friends to come out. This is what I do. My kids are out here. They see what Dad does. They get to touch the airplanes, and they just get their aviation geek on. All right, well, thank you. All Sergeant right, thank Heaton, you. I'm going to check out this family fun event. All right, you need to do it. <laughs> There's not a bad seat on base. You can see the air show from pretty much anywhere. Out on the lawn, you can sit here under the hangar in the shade, you're close to the airplane, you're just in the excitement kind of everywhere you go. What's been your favorite part of the Selfridge Air Show? Well, all the airplanes going by really fast, the noise, the smoke, all that. <laughs> and what about the parachuters? Would you ever do that? Oh, yes. Yeah, you would, you're a brave soul. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How neat is this? It's every kid's dream. He gets to interact with the actual pilot who flies this very vehicle right here. He's telling them, getting ready, starting up. It's normally when you're flying really fast low to the ground, there's uh, a lot of air that causes turbulence. It causes you to bounce around everywhere. So those, those little wings move by themselves to keep the jet smooth. Look at this, I just want to give you an idea of how big these wings are on this B-52 bomber. Huge. Look at that. Just the wing. Hey, look at this, even Delta's in on the action. You can go up, check out a commercial flight. They're letting you get really close up to the engine. What a cool photo op. Daredevils there are, are doing great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's unbelievable, uh, some of the stunts that they're doing. Uh, we have the paratroopers uh, jumping out right now, which is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, can't believe they go up that high. I know. <laughs> well, I really enjoyed the Selfridge Air Show. And let's face it, there aren't a ton of things that you can do for free as a family. But the Selfridge Air Show is an aviator's dream for both the young and old.
I'm at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History, which is the world's largest institution dedicated to the African American experience. And when you come in up the steps, you're greeted by this magnificent rotunda behind me, which creates this really unique acoustic echoey sound. From there, you go on up the steps to their permanent exhibit, And Still We Rise, which is a journey through the African American experience of culture and history that spans all the way from the slave trade days on through the current 21st century. They also have an extremely large temporary exhibit that rotates throughout the year, probably about three or four different per year. But we are here to see their latest permanent exhibit, Inspiring Minds, which challenges everyone to come up with their own great invention. It really is for all ages. Yeah. But we have a lot of things in here for small children that we don't have in other areas of the museum. We have a lot of things that you can touch, which is awesome because right. in a history museum there's often not a lot of things you can touch and yeah. engage with. Mm -hmm. And so the space is really designed to learn history, to learn science, but also to engage and play. The highlight of the exhibition space is the multimedia touch walk. Wow. What we're looking at here is the African American timeline. And there are two components to the timeline. Okay. The first one is the top bar which gives some facts about African American history through the years, and so this is what's happening in 1968. Right. It's designed to give some context, because the stars are actually about specific African American scientists and inventors. Oh. And so the idea is that when you're learning about the mm -hmm. scientists and inventors, mm -hmm. and you don't know what was happening in 1967, you can look at the timeline at the top to get some kind of context about what was going on yeah. in American history and world history that was important. And so we can go from the African American timeline to another content area on marine life. Wow. And the bubbles are all touchable. Oh, And neat. so when a child comes up and they touch one of the bubbles, you get a fact about the ocean. It might be about the ancient ocean. It might be about the ocean now. Mm -hmm. And within each of the bubbles, there's actually an activity that a child can do. So this is a puzzle. Some of them are quiz questions, some of them are matching up, you know, a fish or something that is in the ocean. So Jennifer, I would also think this would be really good for school groups to come in and utilize this space. It is. We have a lot of school groups that come in and when they get here we have an educator that's in the space mm -hmm. that shows them how the room operates and then they yeah. go and do a workshop that kind of gets their creative juices flowing. Yeah, and... it kind of hits at another angle. So they get to do something with their hands, they, mm -hmm. they get to create something, express themselves in a way. And so we actually have a lot of different workshops yeah. that a school can pick from. What do you think about this whole big screen thing? Yeah, I think it's good because we get to like learn about the stuff that we really didn't know. So I learned about like, I didn't even know who it was. So I'm just reading it and I'm finding out who this is. And is it inspiring you to want to do something inventive? Yes. All right, high five for that. <laughs> This vignette's on African Americans in aviation. And so here we have a NASA spacesuit, which is very popular among young kids. They like to see pictures in front of it. And so this vignette focuses on from the beginning mm -hmm. of African Americans um, flying planes all the way up into them being a part of NASA. A lot of cool things in there, but the spacesuit the space is definitely one of the most impressive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a picture perfect moment. Yeah. You can do that over your snap and shot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then this big, bright, bold wall of inventors. Yes. How cool. What is, and what is this thing right here? This is a gas mask designed by Garrett Morgan. It's one of the prototypes that we have at the Wright Museum, as well as the stoplight there, the traffic light. So this is to inspire the young girls. 
<laughs> it is. It's to focus some on African American women in science. And so we focus on five different African American mm -hmm. women that spans a large amount of time. And so there's some information in the touch screen about the women. What's going on in here? This room is what we call a research room. Okay. And we call it the research room because of the database touchscreen, which is here. Oh, more and the science. database touchscreen is where we have all of the scientists and inventors throughout the entire Inspiring Minds exhibition in mm -hmm. one place. We also have a lot of science content within the space, which is on this wall and that wall. And so it's a little bit more serious. So we've got another room here off of it, and this is, uh, oh wow, look at a lot more interactive things in here. I bet the little kids like this area. This Absolutely. So this space really appeals to kindergarten through third age grade students. And it focuses on George Washington Carver's life, but also has a focus on nutrition, eating healthy, and so we have the fake fruits and vegetables. We talk about, a lot about serving size. And all the different things made from peanuts. Absolutely, yes. And we tend to think of only peanut butter, but there's yeah. a lot of things that George Washington Carver did with peanuts and soybeans and sweet potatoes. This is our contemporary scientist kiosk. So we can touch screen. When you start it, there's an intro video. And this is where we highlight some of the scientists that are currently working in science, in technology, engineering, and math. Well, hey, Jennifer, thank you so much. I'm going to take thank a look you. around at some of these other vignettes that we didn't get to touch on. Absolutely. And make sure that you leave a remark at the video recording station. We always watch those. It's very exciting getting feedback from people about the Wright Museum in general and inspiring minds. I'll make so my thank way Thank you very there. much. All right. Thanks, Jennifer. So a third feature of these screens is the A is for Africa exhibit, where they have these different letter blocks coming up. And again, some more information. This kind of ties in with the whole Africa, the exhibit we've got around the lower rotunda. They've got blocks, things to do, big puzzles. They also have this cozy, snuggly reading corner. You can grab a kid's book from up there, grab a stuffed animal. Of course, I don't have my kids with me, but how much fun. You can cuddle up here on the pillows and read a good book. So back in this little corner alcove, you can come back here and make a video to share your thoughts on this touch screen here. Um, you just say you want to tell us about your thing, record your video. <laughs> Very cool exhibit, definitely worth coming to. Lots of great hands-on stuff for the kids to enjoy and the adults too. Let's see. Oh, I just did it. How easy is that? How fun. And then you can play back, see how you did. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Very cool exhibit. Definitely worth coming to. Lots of great hands-on stuff for the kids to join and the adults, too. I've made part of history here at the African American Museum. <laughs> Well, the Inspiring Minds exhibit at the Charles H. Wright Museum is a lot of fun, and as you've seen, there are lots of hands-on things to bring the little ones to. And if you're feeling especially challenged, all of these red blocks under here are actually pieces to a puzzle. They create this map of Africa, and I think I'm going to stick around and do it. I'll see ya, I don't know, maybe tomorrow? Let's see. Where do I There are plenty of things to see and do in Metro Detroit, and our calendar of events is up next to point you in the right direction. See rare and luxury autos at the Concorde d'Elegance and one-of-a-kind inventions at the Henry Ford's Maker Fair. Get ready for four nights of comedy during the Detroit Improv Festival and delicious barbecue at the Ribs and R&B Music Fest. Enjoy a taste of Africa at the African World Festival, and the Woodward Dream Cruise is the world's largest one-day auto event. Celebrate 100 years of military aviation at the Selfridge Air Show and take a time travel adventure at the Michigan Renaissance Festival. Watch the Big Fish pros at the Bassmaster Elite and hydroplanes race along the Detroit River for the Gold Cup. Have fun at the oldest state fair in the United States and downtown Royal Oak transforms into arts, beats and eats. The silky sounds of the Jazz Fest heat up Harp Plaza and the Blue Angels soar into town for thunder over Michigan. To learn of any changes, log on to visitdetroit.com or call 1-800-DETROIT. There are all kinds of ways to get around downtown. We've got the public bus system, we've got cabs, metro cars, Uber. But today we're going to show you three fun ways to get around downtown that each give you a unique perspective of the city. And up first is the queue line. Awesome, awesome way to get around downtown. So you're not biased. No, not biased at all. It's a 3.3 yeah. 
mile circulator um, that goes and connects downtown to the new center north end area. Mm -hmm. you go to Midtown, you can go to the stadiums, the arenas, um, the concerts, anything in between, you're able to use it to get there. So now how many stops are there in total? So we have 20 stops. Okay. Um, there's a total of 12 stations, so we have a mix of in between. So when we say 12 stops, 12, 12 stations, is because it's on both sides of the streets northbound and southbound in got terms of the stations. It. I see there too, it's got a little ETA, so you kind of know when to get yeah. it. So we have our station, um, which actually has all of the information at our station. In the wintertime, we have a heater. Oh. People are waiting nice for the streetcar as well. But then, in, then, and obviously, we do have our, uh, our screen that gives us the estimated time. So you want to jump on? Absolutely, let's ride the queue line. <laughs> Ooh, nice and cool air conditioning. It is air conditioned. So for a dollar fifty, you can ride unlimited for three hours. Oh, okay. And then for three dollars, you can have a day pass that can get you on and off the streetcar as many times as possible for three dollars. And if you're local, can you buy an annual pass? We have our annual pass as well as our monthly pass. Our annual nice. pass is two hundred and eighty-five, mm -hmm. um, and then our monthly pass is thirty. Oh, there's even a spot for bikes. Yep. To so come this on is where actually where you oh. are is an actual bike rack location. Hang your bike. Put it in and hang your bike up. Obviously from a pecking order perspective, our, our seniors and those with disabilities have first access. Oh yeah, it's great too. I mean, if you've got tour, you know, family in front of town to kind mm -hmm. of show off the city, it'd be fun for kids Absolutely. to ride. Uh, it sounds like the San Francisco treat trolley. <laughs> yeah, we have to make sure that we have the bell for Love safety it. purposes. Oh, oh but it's, um, it for, goes with the whole ambiance. It's cool. Absolutely. So this gives you a really unique perspective of the city. You get to see all the new developments that are happening, all the shopping along Woodward, all the outdoor dining back there by Campus Marshes Park. I think this is our stop summer. <laughs> I want to thank you. And you're going to take you. the queue, queue line all the way back to work. Back to work. <laughs> all right, yep, cool. Thanks. Thank you. So I saw you guys jump off the queue line. What did you think about it? I liked it. It was a good way to get around to different places down here. Yeah, every time we come down, we we'll probably use it. So tell me all about Mogo. How does this work? I mean, we've got these stations just like everywhere. Right. <laughs> I mean, how many are there? So there are 43 stations, okay. 430 bikes uh, throughout 10 Detroit neighborhoods. That is amazing. A monthly pass is $18. Um, and an annual pass is $80, and those are what makes mo more sense if you're a resident right, here. Right, right. We also have a special, what we call the access pass. So if you receive state benefits, yeah. you can get an annual pass for $5. Wow. Yeah, and that's good. That is it's 24, really nice. Yeah, the system's okay. accessible 24-7, 365. That's really thoughtful. I mean, that yeah. is cool that you guys have worked that in there. Yep. Um, and so what's a day pass? So a day pass is $8, and that's good for 24 hours. Uh -huh. It's available 24 hours, but all of our trips, are, are there's a 30-minute uh, limit to them before you have to return it to another station. Gotcha. Okay, and then once you check it back in, you can check it right back out. You know, it is a bike share system, yeah. so we want to make sure that our bikes are in the system yeah. for usage. The objective of these yeah. is to really get from point A to point B. You know, it's another transportation option. It's like taking the bus yeah. is how we view it. You don't have to return it to where you get it from. Exactly. Very exactly. clever, very and cool. And the station is your lock, so you don't have to worry about carrying a bike lock with you. Your first stop would be to actually come to the kiosk. Okay. All right, if you, especially if you want to get a daily pass, which you can only get here. And then you would just go through all the prompts, and then you get a code, mm -hmm. and you would put that code in here. Got it. So it's a five-digit you... five code. Mm -hmm. You know, you would put it in here, wait for the green to unlock, bike. I'm going to go ahead and use my car so you can see that. But once you get the green light, you then have the bike. You have the bike. It's yeah. easy peasy. Yeah. I love the MoGo because like I live roughly 30 minutes away from here when it comes walking. And yeah. whenever I just take the MoGo, it's like 10 minutes right to downtown. No traffic. I use it at least two times a day, three times a day. If you can ride a bike, MoGo. MoGo. It's yeah. the best, right? It is the best. <laughs> is that we're bikers sh should stay in the street, not yeah, on the sidewalk. So it really is about sharing the road, right? <laughs> <laughs> you just know everybody. Because you're out on your bike. That's it. You're right, getting to right, know right. your neighbors out on the bike. Right. Well, I've taken up enough of your time. you got to get back to work. I do. I have to get back to work. Just a short little distance away. Luckily, gonna, I have a station right uh, right next to my you're office. You're going to take your MoGo back to work. <laughs> that is so awesome. All right, well, I'm going to take my MoGo and take a little ride and take it back to a different station. Okay, Is that perfect. a plan? Yeah, yeah that's a plan. <laughs> right. <thanks>. <laughs> <laughs> So 43 MoGo stations downtown, they're everywhere. 
Bye guys! Big <laughs> town. All right, I'm back. I'm gonna tell you this was such a fun mode of transportation. The bike was super comfy. Just get it in, get that click, and that's all she wrote. This is so cool. And now we're gonna go up to the paper mover. You just rode the Detroit people mover, you said? Yes. And it was we your did. first time? It was our first time. And we're visiting from Atlanta. Oh, how fun. Yes, although this is our home. And it was a great ride. Yeah, well, what would you think? It's kind of cool being up above looking down, huh? Yes. And seeing all the sights, not only here, but and in Canada. So, Erica, tell me about the Detroit People Mover. What a fun way to get around downtown. Well, we say it's transportainment, so it's... Transportainment, I love yeah. it. <laughs> and it's also the ultimate parking ride. So when you're down here, you can always just park your car one good time, and then you can take the transportation network, be it the Q-Line or hop on from walking, and take a great spin around downtown. It's about three miles and about 15 minutes. You'll have a really great time seeing the views from up top and mm -hmm. get a chance to ride the sky a little bit. So how many different stations? How many stops are, does it make? We have a total of 13 stops. 13, okay. Yep. What's a ride cost these days? A ride is 75 cents. Not bad. <laughs> no, not bad. Not since 1987 we've, we've been around. So it's a it's a great value for families and people who are sightseeing. 6.30 a.m. to midnight Monday through Thursday and then 6.30 to 2 a.m on Friday and 9 o'clock to 2 a.m. on Saturday. Just okay. for Friday and Saturday, allow the entertainment to right. take off. And then Sunday, it's noon to midnight. So how long does it take for a train to come by? We have station? many trains out there on the track at one time, so a train only takes up to maybe three minutes, three to four minutes to arrive. So that's the max, max wait time. That's not bad. No, not at all. It's elevated, it's automated, so you don't have any traffic. It's totally unimpeded by anything going on down below. And well, that's a good point. People love it for that reason. Also, we're connected to quite a few hotels and in walking distance from many. So it's a great, you know, attraction as well as functional public transportation. You can pick up a station guide anywhere along the route just to find some of the cool 400 businesses and restaurants and places to go. Or you can visit our website and that gives you a calendar of events of fun things to do downtown as well. So you're never short of any opportunity to have a great time. So the Q-Line, MoGo, and the Detroit People Mover are three easy, fun, functional, and affordable ways to get around downtown. I'm the eye. That's our show. Thanks for watching. I'm Veronica Vance. And remember, if you would like more information on any of the places we visited, log on to visitdetroit.com. So until I see you next time, go and explore on your own and discover the D. To learn about discounts and special offers for featured attractions, plus how to get copies of Visit Detroit magazine, click on visitdetroit.com. Production funding for this program was made possible by the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau. Driving tourism growth in Metro Detroit since 1896. More information is available at visitdetroit.com. Hang on, I gotta figure out how to turn it. Always something happening here. They're, they're, you never know what, oh, hang on. Um, oh, how's that, is that better? Keep blocking it, thank you. Does <laughs> that happen often? No, not really. <laughs> what I wanna do, even to get more